You guys on the All-Star Game, I'm back here with Paul Pierce, Kendrick Perkins. I mentioned in the last segment that one of the teams, Teams LeBron, is going to wear number two on all their jerseys to honor Gianna in the All-Star Game. Mm. Team Giannis is going to wear number 24 to honor Kobe Bryant. And throughout the entire All-Star Weekend, the NBA has said that every player is going to wear jersey patches with nine stars to represent the nine victims of Sunday's crash. Right. So I think no, that's beautiful. particularly that's nice that's beautiful. as well. I want to talk to you guys about where Kobe stands in basketball history. And look, you know, we have these debates in <laughs> bars and barbershops all the time. Right. But w where would you place him, Paul, in basketball history? Definitely a top ten player. I mean, I think he's right behind Michael Jordan as far as two guards. Because um, when you look at the longevity, the accolades, the championships, I mean, he's right there. So, um Definitely a top 10. I don't know where at, mm -hmm. but second definitely to Michael Jordan as far as yeah. position-wise, shooting guard. But I'll, I have him in my top 10 of all-time players. Well, P, I'm going to disagree with you on this one for the simple fact I'm younger than you. So <laughs> he's actually in my top five. Okay. And when I say my top five, I'm going in this in no particular order, but I'm going Jordan, Magic, uh, Braun, Kobe, and Bird. That's my – Top five all time. Hey, Abdul Jabbar, not making your top That's five. That's my. I, I wasn't born. He's I not a historian I, I, like me. Yeah, I, but I, you know, he doesn't but know about Rachel, Bill Russell. Rachel, I wasn't around like Kareem, that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going on what I saw. He's going I, on I, what he saw. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going on stories. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, to just to take it further, Rachel, I think even past the basketball world, and I said this yesterday, um, you know, with the passing of Kobe, to me, it's like this is the uh, this, his death is more impactful on the world than what Michael Jackson was, you know, what, when he passed. And I think, like, when you look at this, you, I mean, like, it's crazy because I was saying this, it feel like it's a different energy in the world. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, uh, the passing of Kobe Bryant is immortalized, and I think he's in the league of his own. Look, it is hard to place guys, especially with different eras, right? I mean, you no. know, because you have youngins. Yeah, we could debate all. We, I mean, we could debate you know all this. Yeah, that we could debate this all day. Do you know what that underscores to me in all seriousness? And that is, and we're doing it a lot this week. We will continue to do it in the All-Star Game, and we'll do it this fall when, of course, Kobe is scheduled to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. But this means that we have the responsibility, all of us who sat and watched Kobe Bryant play, that 20 years from now, when there's a youngin, who's sitting at a desk like this, doesn't exactly. say, I don't I remember, see I didn't see but, Kobe Bryant. Exactly. But, it's just, but, but listen, it's just, <laughs> right. it's just like this. Take this for example. I was having an argument with one of my uncles, and he was my, one of my great uncles, and he was like, man, I'm telling you, man, Will Chamberlain. And I was like, man, are you serious? Will Chamberlain was playing against guys like um, Skip Bayless and and, and, <laughs> and, and, and and Max Kellerman, man. Like, come on, man, the generation is different. The generation, do you know what Kobe would have did back then? Kobe would have killed deal. Oh, my goodness. That's good. Kobe Bryant, again, we flashed those accolades up here, but fourth all-time in scoring. Of course, LeBron just passed him this weekend. 18-time All-Star. Only Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, more. 11 times first team All-NBA. It's just, it's amazing. I could make a list. It could be the whole rest of this two-hour show. The Shaq and Kobe era, though, of all the eras, and it's funny, we saw the dunks at the beginning of the segment. People always think, when they think Shaq and Kobe, they're like, oh, Kobe was the guard out there, and Shaq was right by the mm -hmm. basket dunking and patrolling there in the paint. But Kobe got in the paint, too. Thank you very much. Yes. What was it like to play against Shaq and Kobe? This was a nightmare. <laughs> Let me tell you. Because most of the times, I would be the weak side defense playing Kobe. Then you throw it over to Shaq, you come double Shaq, but now I'm leaving Kobe open. And it's like, okay, now Kobe's driving and you help off, of, you help off to help on Kobe. Now he's giving it to Shaq. It was just like a defensive nightmare. And it was just like, when L.A. was on the schedule, I was like, man, you know what, I'm going to try to get 30. We're going to lose. Right. And then let's, you might leave, leave with a couple elbows and bruises from Shaq. You might get high like dunked on by Kobe. You know, let's just hurry up and get out in and out of L.A. as fast as possible. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I did not like playing against this duel. What, what made them work so well together on the See, court? You know what? I'm scared to say the wrong thing because I'm up <laughs> no, here no, in, no. The, in, this, in this younger generation. And, and, you know, Kobe and Shaq, to me, is one of the best duos of all time. I mean, you look at it, both of these guys dominated. Like, yeah, this was the most dominant duo. Right, right, right for sure. And, and, and this wasn't just pick and rolls. Like, pick and, this was post-ups. This was at every aspect of the game. And then, you know what? 
what a lot of these what a lot of people don't credit Kobe and Shaq for is that on the defensive end, what they did defensively, especially in the playoffs in the crunch time. I can remember when Shaq was getting five or six block shots. Nobody talk about that. Everybody want to talk about the 35 and 15 that he was putting up. But he was getting them four or five blocks, and Kobe was going to get him two blocks, six steals at crunch time. But mm -hmm. I ranked them high. They they up there, like I said, I'm the younger generation. <laughs> hey, Rachel, look, I don't want no problems with you, RP. I no, both no, admire you. No, I, I don't want because we, I, I agree I, with you on that. All right, cool. As long as you agree with me <laughs> on that, I'm cool. <laughs> Your point about defense is good because Kobe did not come from a generation where we talked about two-way players. To him, you played an NBA basketball. You were a two-way player. It's not under this one I loafing mean, on yeah. one end of the court. Being a great meant playing both ways. Yeah, you know one thing that sticks out to my mind? He was so competitive that he challenged Shaq to get better. Yes. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Shaq has dominated Kobe. When you heard about the feuds, he challenged Shaq. Like, you need to be better for us. And I'm looking up like, how much better can Shaq get? That's right. how competitive and how bad he wanted greatness for just not only himself, but everybody around him. Let me tell you how great it was, right? And I'm not saying this because Pete, my brother, and we went to war together, but him and Kobe wanted to, they basically wanted to kill each other every time yeah, they got yeah, on the court. Yeah. Especially when it was during those Lakers and Celtic time. And to reflect back from what we talked about earlier on the show, I remember when Pete was like, you know, Kobe was doing this thing and Pete came in the shoot around was like, man, I got him. And I'm me and KG looking at P like, P, slow down, man. We right, need you to give us – no, but we need you to give us this 35, man. Right. We don't need you wasting energy. He's like, nah, I got him. He just, You know what? He just going to have to bust my head to the white meat. I don't even care. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> Should I even ask what happened in that game? Oh, man. No, I'll tell you another story. All-star game. I think it was 2009 we beat him. So I'm, I'm yelling at Kobe. I'm on the bench. Like, he going to choke at the line. He going to choke. <laughs> I'm standing up, and he shoots the free throw. And I remember, like, after the free throw, he walks over to the bench, and I thought we were going to fight. He, he was pissed off that I was yelling from the <laughs> sideline. I was like, you don't choke like you did in the finals. You know, I'm yelling this. Paul Pierce. Like, no, I'm just talking. You know, I'm talking smack. Right. I talk smack. That's you know, what this is the all I thought we were going to fight in the All-Star game. He was so pissed off. It's an All-Star game. I know. Right. I know. It was, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. Look, Rach, one more, too. I, I got to tell you this. So we, I'm in Oklahoma City, right? Yeah. And we playing the Lakers in the playoffs. So I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, give my team some tenacity. I'm you know, showing sure. them, like, hey, man, we're not about to get infatuated with Kobe Bryant. And I, we go out. So the first play, I hold I foul him. He go to the free throw line. I'm like, hey, man, yeah, we stopping this. We locking this up today. Ain't nothing easy. He gets to the free throw line. Before he shoot his first free throw, he like, say, Perk. I got 30,000 reasons why y'all not about to stop me today. <laughs> he used to hit me with them classics, man, below the belts, but I had to take them. Ooh, ooh, As we're talking one. about Kobe and Shaq, I just want to say what Shaquille O'Neal did on Tuesday night, Ooh, you guys saw what he yes. did on TNT, it was so beautiful it and was. heartfelt. I was very grateful having covered them together, having covered them when they broke apart, some of the, frankly, terrible things that they said about each other for years, that they were able to come together mm, toward the yeah, end of that, that Kobe's beautiful. playing career. They had a, a great moment uh, on TV together. Uh, on TNT did a public interview with the two of them, but then they also had a great private moment. I remember being at Kobe's last game, and before the game, and, and, and Shaq was there, and Kobe came in through a private room, and the two of them, I remember just seeing the two of them talking. was just It was really special to see that. And then during Kobe's last game, game Shaq is the one who challenged him and said you got to go out and get 50 you got to go out and get 50 it's your last game right and then of course as Shaq famously said after he goes I challenged him to get 50 and then the mother whatever <laughs> went out and got 60 <laughs> instead That's it right there, um, and, and Shaq of course also very poignantly talking on TNT the other night about how he wishes that they had talked a little more in recent years Kobe mm -hmm. being so sweet to Shaq's son right and and just a good reminder that uh, even when things are feuding and, and things seem very difficult, uh, it is worth holding on to all of those relationships. And Kobe's death is so tragic, but if it can teach some of us some things as we go forward, at least we can give that some meaning. So that is my, my, my Kobe Shaq feeling is watching them at the end. Yeah, brothers, it's beautiful. Brothers sure. like they were at the beginning. All right.